Today's lesson is a slight increase in difficulty from 4.3 to 4.4. Solving quadratics equaling 0 when a does not equal 1. Good news is Clinton Magic isn't even scared. So let's just factor this quadratic. I'm going to start it off like any other quadratic. I'm going to multiply a times c on the top. Get 30. Don't accidentally put 6. You've got to do a times c. Last lesson, a was always equal to 1, so it's an easy mistake to make. The bottom is still b. Don't just put x on the top. Don't forget the rule is you got to put a times x, and a is 5. The only part that requires some thinking is two numbers that multiply together to give 30, and add together to give negative 17. After making a list or thinking it through, you come up with your two numbers. One other thing we didn't have to do in the last lesson was reduce, because nothing ever reduced. This time, we do have to reduce. This guy reduces to x over negative 5. The other fraction does not. Once we've reduced, we can write our answer. x minus 5, 5x five minus 2. Done. You can use any of the other methods of factoring as well. They all give you the same answer. Same idea. Go ahead and use whatever method you like. See if you get the same answer as me. What we're going to start seeing soon is we're going to have an equal zero at the end of this problem and find our two zeros or x-intercepts. At this point, you can pause the video and try some of these on your own, or you can do that later. Next up, we've got some special cases. Just like we saw in the last lesson, we've got something squared minus something squared. So we get to use our difference of squares formula. Same idea on B and C. We've got something squared at the beginning. We've got something squared at the end. We just have to make sure that the middle matches up. And it does. And because B is positive, we say 2y plus 5 squared. C, let's see if that one works out. We've got 6w squared. We've got 1 squared. Make sure the middle matches up two times those two things. That is 12. Because of the minus sign, we say 6w minus 1 squared. You don't have to have those formulas memorized. You could use Clinton magic on all three, and that would also work, as well as any other method of factoring would work. At this point, you can pause the video and try some of these on your own, or do that later. Example 4 has a little bit of a added difficulty. Before you use Clinton magic or whatever other factoring method you've been using, you're supposed to always look to see if anything factors out. For example, in part A, we can factor out a 5, and we're left with x squared minus 9. If you go back and look at all of the other examples from the last two lessons, you'll notice that none of them had a number that you could factor out. So we've got to do that for B, C, and D. Leave yourself some space because we're actually not done with even part A. But go ahead and see if you can pull out that common factor on all three. Try that on your own. Pause the video. Take special notice of part C. That was the only one out of these four where we could actually pull a letter and a number out. Before we can say we're done, though, we have to look at the parentheses and say, does this factor any further? Two of them do, two of them don't. Pause the video, try to find the two that factor, and also factor them. A and B factored further. If you notice on C, we didn't even have a quadratic left inside the parentheses. And on part D, we did have a quadratic left in the parentheses, but if you try Clinton magic, we notice that it doesn't factor further. So we're done with this one. At this point, you can pause the video and try some of these on your own, or you can do that later. Now we finally got that equal zero in. Your first step should be to factor these guys and make sure that they both equal zero. Notice on part B, we don't have something equal to zero, so you've got to make it equal to zero first. So go ahead, let's start with number A. 
try to find your two zeros, see if they match up with one. Part B has a little more work to it. You've got to make that whole thing equal zero first. So before I put up any answers, go ahead and pause the video and try to make one side equal to zero. Doesn't matter which side, your answer might be different than mine if all the signs are different. But I'm going to have my A be positive. It's easier to use Clinton magic if A is positive. Hopefully you got something like this. Now, before you use Clinton magic, the tricks don't stop here on this problem. You've got to do what we did on the last side and factor something out. I notice a five factors out. At this point, you can factor this using whatever method you want, and hopefully you get the same answer as I do. Go ahead and pause the video, try to get it, see if you match up. That's it. This was a perfect square trinomial, so we only got one answer. At this point, go ahead and pause the video and try to figure out what to do on this one. Looks like we've got a quilt that we want to add an extra little strip to around the outside. Our new dimensions are going to be 4 plus 2x times 5 plus 2x. And that's going to equal our original dimensions, which was a 5 by 4. That was 20 square feet. And we want to add 10 square feet to that, so we can just say plus 10. At this point, we need to solve this whole thing. A couple tips to keep in mind as you're trying this on your own. You've got to factor out, before, and then you've got to make one side equal to zero. Then refactor and see what your answers are. You might have to throw out an answer that doesn't make sense. If you go through all the process correctly, you should get two answers. X equals negative 5, X equals 1 half. In the context of this problem, x equals negative 5 doesn't make any sense because we cannot extend the borders by negative 5 feet. We can, however, extend the borders by 1 half foot. And that's all it's asking us. How much should we extend the borders by? So we're done. Go ahead and pause the video again. Try to understand what's going on in this problem, and then we'll talk it out. This one should look familiar to you, kind of like the go-kart problem. We've got a revenue that's originally $10 per magazine times 28,000 subscribers. Now it's telling us every time we increase the price by a dollar, so we can maybe 10 plus X, that's how many dollars we increase by, we're going to lose some subscribers. We started with 28,000, and we're losing for every dollar. 2,000 subscribers. We want to maximize this re revenue, which really means we want to find the vertex of this parabola. So to do that, we're going to say we want the revenue we're going to want the revenue to be maximized. To do that, again, we're going to find the vertex. There's a few ways we've learned to find the vertex. We could find x-intercepts, which means set this whole thing equal to zero. Once we have the x-intercepts, we find the midpoint of them. That would give us the x-value of the vertex. We could also find the vertex by multiplying this whole thing out and using the negative b over 2a formula. I'm not going to do it that way, mainly because this is a factoring section. So we're going to find the zeros of this. We'll set the whole thing equal to zero. And I'll also factor out something out of this big one because you always try to factor out. The biggest number that goes into both of those is 2,000. Left with 10 plus x and 14 minus x. So the two ways we can get a revenue of zero is by making the magazines cost negative $10 each, or we can not cost negative $10 each, but lower the price by $10. That would make our revenue zero because we're selling them for free, or we can make the revenue up by $14, meaning we charge $24 for the magazines. That would also give us a revenue of zero. No one would buy them. We want something right in the middle. That's how we find our vertex. Take our negative 10 plus 14, divide by 2. And we get 2. 
That's the x value of the vertex. Let's find the y value, which would be our maximum. We just plug in 2. Be sure you get the same number I get. I get 288,000. Not much more than they were getting by charging $10, but by increasing the price of the magazine by $2, their revenue would go up by about $8,000, which is good for them because businesses want to make money. At this point, you can pause the video, try this on your own, or you can do that later. Other than that, we are done with this lesson.